All right, here we go. In this video, we're going to be going over a very basic guide on building and painting 15 millimeter miniatures, and we're going to go over everything. So if you're brand new to the 15 millimeter miniature hobby, this is the place to start. And we are uh, going to be painting up some Plastic Soldier Company 15 millimeter U.S. infantry. And the first step is to remove all your miniatures from the sprue, a good pair of clippers, uh, can be used or in a pinch you can use a hobby knife. The next step is uh, we need to remove all the seam lines from the miniatures and you can do that with a hobby knife. Just scrape the hobby knife along all the seams. Uh, if you're following along and you have metal miniatures uh, it's the same method it's just a little bit harder to come off. Also you may need to use some very fine metal files instead. I do apologize, but I lost some footage of the assembly section. Uh, these Plastic Soldier Company miniatures do have some extra arms that you have to attach, so uh, you can go ahead and do that with the plastic, uh, excuse me, the Tamiya Plastic Cement Extra Thin, which is what I recommend. And after assembling them, now I'm going over the seam lines with a very thin coat of the Tamiya Pat Plastic Cement and that will help to eat away any leftover seam lines and uh, eat away any little bits of plastic fluff that we missed. Uh, don't do too much of this, just a, a little bit. We're going to be painting these guys in a assembly line fashion, so we need to mount them on something uh, to handle them and paint them all at once. Um, what I'm using is a strip of balsa wood and we're going to glue down all the miniatures in a line. I have about three or four of these little sticks. Uh, to glue them down, I am using hot glue. Uh, there's a variety of different things you can use. Hot glue, uh, you can use a very tiny drop of super glue or you can use blue tack or poster tack. Uh, use whatever you prefer. The next step is primer, and I'm priming these with my airbrush and using Vallejo Gray Primer. And um, you want to start with a very light coat to begin with, and uh, just let that dry for 10 seconds, and then you can go ahead and put a, a thicker coat on that will uh, prevent the primer from bubbling. Um, you do not have to use an airbrush. You can use a spray can if you like. Um, I would not recommend brush on primer. That doesn't work too well. Uh, but an airbrush is the best because that helps you fill in all the nooks and crannies, but uh, again, use what is available to you. And finally, we can get on to the actual painting. Uh, again, at the airbrush booth, and I'm starting with a base coat of Vallejo Model Color Khaki over the entire surface area of the miniature. Uh, again, airbrush is not mandatory, but it is extremely helpful. Uh, you can use, again, spray paint, or you can use uh, do this by brush if, if that's all you have available to you. Now we're back at the painting desk, and um, as usual, I tend to pick the hardest things to paint, and mid-war U.S. infantry has uh, a lot more colors than most armies. Uh, so if you're painting another nationality or late war Americans, uh, you'll have a lot easier time of this since their uniforms are all one color. Mid-war Americans have different color jackets from their pants, so I have to paint the pants first. And for the pants, I'm using Vallejo model color English uniform. And we're just going to go ahead and paint the front of the pants of all the miniatures, and then we'll flip the uh, a little stick over and paint the back. Then. Uh, look for any spots that we missed. It's just going down assembly line and painting colors in. The next thing to get painted is the wood, the wood stocks on all the weaponry. And for that I'm using Vallejo model color burnt umber. Uh, you have some variety with the colors you can use for this. You can go with a lighter brown or a, I want to go darker brown, but uh, you could definitely go lighter if you wish. But uh, 
just use a brown color essentially uh, whatever you use will be fine the next thing to get painted is the metal bits on all the rifles and guns and for that I'm using Vallejo model color German gray uh, I really do not like using metallics for metal uh, especially weaponry on 15 millimeter miniatures because I just don't think in that scale you're gonna have a, a bright a sheen because it is so uh, small to the eye as you're viewing it so uh, a non-metallic German gray works perfectly fine next comes the flesh and for that we're using Vallejo model color beige red and in case you're wondering if this is all done in a specific order the answer is yes we're essentially painting from the hardest to reach areas outwards so we start with the gun and then paint the hands after that because the hands wrap around the gun so that's why we want to paint the gun first uh, also the same thing when we get to the helmets we paint the faces first because the helmet goes over the face or over the head and uh, all this is done to make it easier to paint um, in a more logical method and uh, it's less likely that you're going to slop paint on something you previously painted before. Next comes what is called the webbing. Uh, the webbing is essentially all the uh, the pouches and um, the belts and the uh, I'm not sure what do you call them. I call them spats, but basically the uh, the boot wrappings. And for all of that, we're using Vallejo model color green gray. And now on to the helmets. They're getting painted with Vallejo model color brown violet. And um, also any other weaponry or the radios are also getting painted this same uh, this color. Essentially any field equipment was painted uh, this shade, which we're using brown violet for. But the bazooka, bazooka shells, radios, helmets, um, and virtually, well, there's not much else on these miniatures uh, equipment-wise, but uh, with U.S. infantry, when in doubt, paint it brown violet. We're in the home stretch now. The last thing to get painted are the boots, and they are getting painted with Vallejo flat, Vallejo model color flat brown. And remember, because of the spats on uh, or the boot covers, whatever they're called, it's just the basically the the toes of the boot and the heel. Um, that's all that needs to get painted this color. Um, if you wanted to, since do the small scale, you can probably paint over the uh, the boot coverings and paint everything red brown. And I don't think people would be able to tell. Um, I leave that up to you, though. Up until now, we haven't shaded any of these colors uh, because that's where the Army Painter Quick Shade comes in. Uh, Army Painter Quick Shade is essentially uh, wood stain, um, possibly slightly formulated differently, but uh, in a nutshell, it is wood stain. Uh, it comes in three different colors, but makes uh, for quick jobs. It does a pretty good job at uh, shading everything in just one big stroke because brown shades everything, and uh, because of the lacquer nature of the uh, the stain, it kind of just flows where you need it to. So, uh, first thing, it is essentially wood stain. So make sure you cover your work area. I got some paper towels down and just get yourself an old brush and uh, brush it over the miniatures. Um, you're, you're a bit better off if you dab it rather than brushing it on because brushing could cause little little bits to fly here and there and again it is wood stain and it will stain whatever it touches but uh, do not pull it on. Uh, you just want an even coat and it will just kind of flow wherever it needs to and once you're done with this, just set it uh, aside and let it dry for a good 24 hours. Once the Army Painter Quick Shade is dry, you can go ahead and pop your miniatures off your balsa wood assembly line stands and uh, glue them onto the bases. Uh, you can use your Tamiya extra thin plastic cement like we did previously, 
or uh, this is about one of the few times where gel cement actually comes in handy because it has the, the two flat surfaces um, the gel makes sure there's a really good contact point because it's a lot thicker than uh, standard liquid cement um, and since we're going to be covering up the base anyway if there's a little bit extra cement squishing off the sides that's perfectly fine uh, and actually could be a little bit helpful Now there's going to be a little step down from the miniature base to the uh, the larger base and uh, you can leave it as is but it tends to look better if you fill that in. Uh, you can use some uh, spackle or any type of putty to fill that in but a really quick and easy way is just to use super glue and uh, just spread it around the edge of the base. Some of these uh, gaps were already filled in by the uh, plastic cement gel so uh, if you were a little bit liberal with that, you won't have to do as much of this step. Next, we need to add a little bit of grit to our bases. And uh, for that to stick, we need some glue. And you can use white glue or PVA glue. But what I'm using here is actually artist gel uh, specifically this is golden uh, artist regular gel matte medium and uh, it is a bit a little bit thicker than glue and tends to uh, go where you want it white glue tends to kind of run and uh, tends to be a little bit less controllable but uh, whichever one you use just spread it around all over your base and then sprinkle it with a uh, little bit of sand uh, I actually did two steps. Uh, first, I did a few spots of Gale Force 9 medium grit, and then I followed that up with a good healthy coat of Games Workshop's sand. Once your glue is all dry, uh, you want to take a large brush and uh, brush over it to uh, remove any loose gravel and after that we can move on to the painting and starting off with some extremely thin Vallejo camo black brown um, and we want it very thin so it flows into all the little nooks and crannies on the base it's not going to cover well but uh, the coverage will come with the dry brushing later on uh, you want to do this fairly quick though because the wet paint will soften the glue and uh, if you brush too many times too much in the same area uh, your gravel will start coming up so uh, just be cautious of that and um, once you're done let this dry completely so the glue re-solidifies and then we can move on to the next dry brushing step to give the dirt a bit more texture we're going to dry brush twice uh, first with Vallejo model color flat brown and then again with Vallejo model color green ochre um, I'm using a large brush to begin with to get the uh, the larger surface area and then I'm going to use a smaller brush in between the legs and any other hard to reach areas. Obviously I'm trying to avoid dry brushing the feet at this stage. Um, and then as well off camera I did paint the rocks, the Gale Force 9 medium grit with some rocky sand. And now we're at the final step. The miniatures have already been varnished, flat varnished, with some testers dull coat. And now we're going to add a bit of greenery, some grass to it with some uh, static grass. And we're putting on some slightly thinned white glue. And to that we are putting on just a little bit of static grass here and there. Uh, how much you add is up to you. Um, this particular shade I think is Gale Force 9 Dead Grass or winter grass so I use a pair of tweezers to put it on and uh, just put it on where you need and then shake off the excess uh, I did use two different uh, colors of grass once the first one is dry I went back with some dead grass to add a little more uh, you can do that it adds a bit more variety but uh, once the glue is all dry take a large brush and brush off any excess and call it quits because you are done so we're all done, but I'm ending this a little bit differently than normally. Uh, 
usually I would have a couple of these figures on my little spinning uh, base doing the final afterthoughts. Uh, however, that's not really suited for this project because we're talking about 15 millimeter basic painting. So quantity is better than quality. So showing you everything at once uh, works a lot better because again, basic paint jobs, not very well suited for close up viewing because these are very simplified but um, they are perfect for the tabletop so uh, if you're just starting out with 15s uh, these are really it's decent basic paint jobs uh, you do get good results uh, you can see my more professionally painted airborne guys with much more detail but when you move it all back you know everything looks uh, roughly the same and uh, so there you have it uh, plastic soldier company infantry I like them a lot of people don't because they think they're too uh, puny looking or too skinny uh, I think they actually are much better in scale than the battlefront lumpy headed guys but you know that's my personal opinion uh, some of the weapons are a little bit weedy um, and I had a few bend or break off during the paint job uh, So just keep that in mind those little thin plastic rifles do tend to break But we are done and as you see I got sheet metal on the bottom of them for my Transport tray which I showed you a couple months ago. I finally built my flames of war transportation box and We have all the tanks also magnetized Sheets of uh, balsa wood inserted with magnets. Sheet metal on the bottom of the tanks. My cupcake tray here slides right on. And then we just continue to stack up. But uh, anyway, um, that's it for this vid. I uh, hope it helps you. Very basic way of painting 15 millimeter. Uh, good way to get you started. And I hope this helps. Bye bye.